Hey, what's up, reefers? Hey, what's up, reefers? Today we're gonna take a look at the 17 gallon drop off tank. As you know, I pulled out the media basket, I put the modified skimmer back in. We're gonna see how it's performing. Something is also happening to Frogfish Mochi. So let's take a look. All right, guys, before we move on to the tank update, I wanna show you two really cool gadgets that I picked up uh, two weeks ago that I really like. It's the Mac filter and the newers. Uh, now, this is not sponsored product or anything like that. I just really like them. I thought this may uh, benefit some of you guys as well, so I wanna share. So right now, the camera is on auto white balance. Normally, when I shoot videos with my, uh, with my tank, especially under LED lights, I need to turn it to manual white balance and crank it all the way up to like 9900K Kelvin. So it's really, so to count Counteract the blue. The filter that a lot of us are really familiar with is the orange filter. You here, I just kind of put it over. You get an orange cast, right? This will counteract the blue as well. So it comes with different st different style. They have a gel filter, which is essentially just like a plastic orange paper. We have a regular photo filter. That's what this is. This is I think it's like 30 uh, no 53 millimeter. I think it's 53 if I remember right. So we have stuff like this. And also there's um, for camera, uh, sorry, not camera, for phone, you have the clips, right? That's popular as well. So all of them typically uh, orange. So I bought the newer sets because it has all kinds of different color, but the two that I'm really interested in is the orange, which is this one and the brown. Because sometimes I feel like the orange is a little bit too, here, here's without, here's with. It looks nice, but then sometimes I find it, it's a little too saturated. And this largely depending on how you set your blue LED up. If you have it as really blue, like straight up a tinic, then orange will probably work well. But for me, uh, I think this is around like 19K or 20K, so it's not totally blue, even though it looks really blue on camera. The brown works really well for me. So if you look here, this looks way more natural than the orange. So I decided to use this brown. Now the second question, or the second issue with using this camera filter, uh, <laughs> I have to demonstrate here because it's so awesome. This is a standard filter. The filter itself is cheap. It's like, I think it's like 12 or $13 for a whole set. The expensive part is this part. And this is really cool because like, if you're using a point and shoot camera, you know there's no, there's no screw for you to screw a standard photo filter on. But this company actually makes magnetic camera filter adapter. So what it is like is like a really small piece of um, uh, magnetic that you tape onto the front of the lens. And this thing is metal, or maybe it has magnet inside too, I'm not sure, but it basically just suction in place. Or it, uh, it get held in place by the magnet. And the great part about this size filter is that when you, if you have the lens extract, uh, extruded, when you put a camera on the ground, it does not interference, meaning that this fits perfectly and you can take it off super easily. Here, check this out. Oh, 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 there you go. Just like that, super easy. So I really love this product. I've been using it for two weeks. Um, the white balance right now is set to auto white balance. So that means that if this filter alone is not enough, I don't want to use orange filter, I can go to manual white balance and tweak, uh, make the Kelvin higher. So to demonstrate, here's blue. Slap right on. That's it. This is so awesome. And this comes in really handy if I want to do like a single shot, like single, like no cut shot. And I can just like uh, film, film, film like this and then I'll, I'll swing the camera around, film myself, oh, it's too orange. Let's take off the filter, just like that. So this, this is uh, seriously a game changer for me. I love it. I've been using it for two weeks and <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless whoever came up with this idea. All right, I'm sorry for this tangent. Let's move on to the tank update. All right, guys, you notice that the tank is extra dirty today. And the reason it's dirty is because uh, I decided not to clean the tank before shooting this video. I wanna show you guys how it actually looks without me cleaning it before shooting first. So I have not touched the tank this week, so it's about seven days. Uh, so it's about seven days of growth with the LG on the acrylic. And you see that the uh, Manipura cab actually got knocked over, uh, I think it was like last night, but it was kind of late, so I didn't want to stick my hand in there. I uh, just kind of left it. So I got to fix that right after filming. So you see there's a thin layer of diatom on the acrylic. Now, to compare and contrast, when I was having the media basket in the back, I did not really have this issue until I think it's like week and a half in. So I think comparing the skimmer, the Hydor Nano Skim, 
uh, compare that to the media basket with filter plus and also the aqua max uh, all in one filter media i think just carbon and gfo i think the media basket is, is working out a little bit better than the uh, skimmer but then again we can also argue that uh, by me pulling out the media basket and putting in the skimmer i was messing up the balance a little bit so it may not be completely fair to compare the two at the moment uh, so i'm gonna leave the skimmer in for one more week to see if it made any difference and then uh, we will i'll decide whether to keep the skimmer in there or just switch over to media basket now speaking of skimmer i if you're following me on instagram at inappropriate reefer i actually share a bunch of different contents on there uh, i talked about me modding the uh, nano skim and actually include the instruction on how to do that. Essentially, I use hot glue to kind of glue up all the seam, all the open seam. And there's, um, there, I think there's like two great resources for how to do this. If you're interested, I'm gonna have it in the video description below as well. Uh, it has like step-by-step -step -step instruction, a photo instruction on exactly where you put the hot glue in order to make, make it so that the micro bubble does not escape the skimmer prematurely. Um, and this way, supposedly, it boosts performance a lot. And then um, it helped with server skimming a lot. And my gimbal just died, that's why the camera just dropped. Hey, so now I'm hand holding this and the gimbal. Uh, so I'm gonna give it another, another week to see how the skimmer performs. But on first glance, I think the media basket uh, is performing a lot better than this. All right guys, so let me go ahead and clean the tank, pick that frag up, and then I'm gonna give you a little update on Frogfish Mochi. Moments later. So I have cleaned up this tank a little bit, but I wanted to show you before cleaning, just so that you don't get the wrong idea that the tank is always looking like this. Well, it's not even that clean right now, but uh, at least uh, not to this caliber of cleanliness. Normally it's a lot messier. It's just that when I'm filming, filming for you guys, I feel like uh, I should clean it up a little bit to the point where we can at least uh, look into the aquarium, right? All right, so in terms of update, uh, Yellowtail Blue Damsel, still a daredevil, still hanging out with Mochi. That is Mustang right there. And the funny thing is the other Yellowtail Blue Damsels is also surviving. He or she has been in the tank for three weeks already. So I'm really happy that Mustang was able to find a tank mate, but I have no idea how the other newcomer also survived for this long. Now, both of them have been swimming around in front of uh, Mochi uh, all this time. And for whatever reason, Mochi sometimes they look at them, but he does not inhale them like other fish. So they must have made some kind of pact. Because whenever I feed like shrimps and stuff like that into this tank, I do see one of these uh, yellowtail blue damsel pack at it. Um, whether it's to chase him, chase a shrimp away from the territory, or chase a shrimp towards mochi, we don't know. But there's a lot of speculation saying that maybe they have a pact where as long as the damsel hook mochi up, mochi leave them alone. So over here we can see the uh, bubbleton enemy has healed up. This is the one that kind of butched. Uh, basically I tore it up and half of it went to Sally's tank, the other half stayed here and as you can see it has uh, healed up really well. And the zoas are looking good. Even though some of them is not, the Vietnamese one is not too happy, those four pops right there. But usually they're opened um, and they are definitely starting to take over the rock, especially the Vietnamese Zoas. Fetid Andro continues to be doing well. I'm actually kind of surprised the other one uh, closed up. Usually they are always happy and open and full. But you can kind of see like all these head, all these new heads is kind of popping out, and I really contribute this to all the extra food that I'm feeding this tank, because um, if there's like a dead ghost shrimp, actually you know what I'm gonna feed them because I, I noticed there's a dead ghost shrimp in the other tank. Um, if Mochi does not take it, you should just kind of drop it right into the uh, fitted andro. And over here, the green stop polyp is once again climbing the wall, and once it gets to a certain height, I'm just gonna cut the entire portion off. And actually, maybe this time I'll glue it to the sidewall. And speaking of GSP, check out the one at the bottom. So I have, I added a couple of small colonies right here, or small frags, two of them being a frag plug. One of them got pushed here by a snail. Uh, but comparing the two, you see the one that's kind of glued directly onto acrylic grew a lot faster. It has really established itself and started expanding. Versus these two on frag plugs, uh, can't speak on frag plugs. 
this still kind of working their way off the plug so it's taking a while this one has came off the plug actually on the other side um, so it is starting to expand on the on the bottom acrylic but the speed is nothing like that so if you're trying to get GSP to grow on the back glass and stuff like that glue them directly on there uh, if you leave them on a plug it's gonna take a while for them to get onto the acrylic the Monty Power Cap is doing well uh, I was able to remount that pretty quickly I just kind of wedge it in place because I feel like it's growing to that shape uh, so I like how it's plating and the edges is taking on a pretty vibrant orange And the MP10 is definitely pulling his weight, although with the uh, pre-filter getting clogged up so often, the, the power, the flow is not as strong as before. I have to clean out the, um, uh, the pre-filter, I think, every week. Um, so right now it's pretty clogged up, that's why the flow is not that strong. Usually you'll see the GSP kind of like blown over the place. All right, guys, with that said, let me go ahead and grab a the, the dead ghost shrimp in the feeder tank, and then I'm gonna feed it to the fat dendro. So here is uh, the ghost shrimp feeder tank, and you notice there's a dead ghost shrimp right there. I'm gonna grab it. All right. So this is what I do with uh, dead ghost shrimps. Nothing goes to waste. So we're gonna drop it right here. Tease Mochi a little bit first. Does not seem interested, so when this happened, look at the damsels. When this happened, I just kind of drop it. Which head? Let's do this head. Drop it in the fehedendro. This reminds me of um, watching water boil. <laughs> it's uh, moving quite slow this time. But you can kind of see the mouth opening up and engulfing the shrimp. Well, in the meantime, <clears throat> I'm gonna be feed mochi as well. So, oh no, something spooked him. It let the shrimp go. Look at that. The damsel pecked at it, but the other fed head andrel got a little grasp on it. I'm not sure. It's probably not gonna hold. I'm gonna pick it up later. But let's go ahead and. Oh man, I'm making a mess. Let's go ahead and grab a ghost shrimp to feed mochi. Oh, let's see. Okay, here's a big guy right here. And just Okay, there we go. I've been I'm getting pretty good at uh anticipating where the shrimp is gonna go. Alright, so normally if I want to feed them really quickly, I'll put the shrimp against the glass first. Get Mochi's attention. Okay, so Mochi sees something's going on. All right, he seems interested. And I'm just gonna turn the net towards Mochi. And just let the shrimp out. Right there, so it's really quick. So if I just wanna feed him, I don't wanna spend too much time. That's what I'll do. Uh, in the past, I would drop the shrimp in front of him and then I'll wait and I wasn't sure if it was happening. Damn, so it'll come in and mess things up. And I may need to use like a turkey baster so to kind of baste the shrimp over it. Just stressful. Um, so I'd rather it be something quick if it just kind of like a feed and go situation and that's what I normally do I just kind of keep the shrimp in the net and just make sure if Mochi sees him first and then turn the net opening towards Mochi um, and then Mochi at that point would just kind of pop in and just inhale and that's pretty much it okay so in the last few months there's a really interesting development in terms of Mochi's color and I normally don't do this unless I really need to move him uh, sometimes when he's at the bottom, but I'll show you guys. Oh, right there, perfect. So, let me move him over a little bit. You see how big he is now, by the way? You see on the side, right? Right there. And also on the fin. He, yeah, he doesn't like it, so I'm gonna leave him alone. Uh, so he actually has yellow spots on the side now. It's almost like, almost like his skin is turning a bright yellow or lime green to match the green star polyp. But the thing is, it's only on one side of the body. Oh, by the way, why is it hiding under the bubble tip anatomy? That does not make me feel good. Uh, so yeah, it's only on one side of the body. Oh my goodness, yeah. 
All right, right there, that's perfect actually. You see how it's um, kind of like lime green? I'm not sure if you guys can see it. There's like two spots on the on the watt, like the, pl uh, the spot that kind of sticks out on his body. It's turning like yellow. And notice at the fin, the anal, anal fin right there, it's turning a bright yellow as well. Um, so my, my, at first I thought that clown wash skin, uh, wash skin frogfish is not supposed to turn col change color, right? It's more the painted that changes the color to the surrounding. I thought like once you're white, you're always white. If you're yellow, you're always yellow because that's like two, two color morph. One is like white and maroon like mochi and there's a yellow and maroon that I see once in a while. Um, so somebody left a comment saying that uh, clown, wasp skin, frogfish, they actually could change their body color to match the surrounding. So he suspect that maybe this is what Mochi is doing right now, just changing his color to match the surrounding. And since the surrounding is mostly GSP, maybe that's why he's turning yellow. Um, I don't know. And funny thing is like, this is only happening on one side of his body, the other side is totally white. Uh, so I am going to continue observing to see what's going on and hopefully it is not something health related and just like a natural progression of his coloration of the surrounding. Alright guys, with that said, that is the update for the 17 gallon drop off tank. If you have any question, please feel free to leave a comment, I'll try my best to answer it. And if you are not following me on Instagram already, please do follow me on Instagram, it's at inappropriate reefer. I share a lot of different contents. I, I think I up I update maybe like three or four times a day. I've been uh, getting hooked on Instagram. Um, so that is probably the best place to kind of see the most up-to-date things about my aquariums. Um, and hey, check this out. So I moved the uh, ghost shrimp from right there because it's just kind of hanging by antenna to here. And uh, this, this, this mini colony really quickly gobbled it up and that's mochi right there kind of pissed off that i was trying to poke him a little bit but yeah that is the update for today i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope you guys are having a great week and i will see you guys next sunday at 9 30 a.m sharp see ya Good to you. Looks good. Thank you so much. No problem.